hide them has their gifts and their talents. Um, and believe it or not, it's a myth that you are going to fall in love with something when you're not good at it. Right. So get good at something. Right. Get really good at something. Right. And when you're really, really good at something, that breeds opportunity. And then when you take advantage of the opportunity. So you're saying become good or an expert at something or passionate about something and find a way to monetize that. That's right. Well, Hi everyone, Marc Nicolas here with the Think Well Differently community. I'm here with a friend, Jeremy Blossom, and uh, he, he is a successful entrepreneur. I asked Jeremy to join us for a little chat about wealth, uh, processes, and what he's learned throughout his journey. So Jeremy, talk to us a little bit about yourself. Hey everybody, my name is Jeremy Blossom. I am the CEO and co-founder of StrikePoint Media. And our main goal is to drive mass amounts of traffic and help businesses convert that traffic into raving fans of their business. Okay, awesome. So Jeremy, first question, yeah. what's your definition of wealth? Uh, my definition of wealth, it's a great question. It is the ability to do what you want when you want to do it. Um, so it doesn't, for me, it's not about how much money you have. Wealth is measured in your ability to have uh, unlimited freedom. So the more freedom you have to do what you want, when you want to do it, how you want to do it, in my opinion, the wealthier you are. Part two to that is that um, family, friends, um, you know, guys like you, um, the more people that you have in your life, that's, you know, at the end of the day, you can't take anything with you. So it's what you do with your time, invest in people, and then the, what the people bring back to you measures your wealth. Awesome. What about the daily processes, Jeremy? I mean, is there any one thing at least or, or many things it's open to discussion that you do every day to set you up for success so i'm a big fan of stoicism so every single day i read something about stoicism and stoicism means is that it's a philosophy of understanding what you can actually control and what you can't control and letting go of the things you can't control and handling and owning the things that you can control so I try to do that to remind myself one thing. I am ridiculously in control of my life every single day. I make my happiness. Happiness isn't something that you find. It's something that you create. It's something that you want. It's something that you choose. And so by starting my day off every single day by reading something in the stoicism realm um, is how I like to start my day. Part two to that is I will either continue to read or I write. I believe that every single day you should write out your thoughts. Your best ideas happen in the morning, right when you're fresh. So I try to reserve my most highly productive hours in the morning to crank out the biggest, most important things I need to do that day. If I don't get anything else done, but I read and I write that day, I know I'm gonna win. Is that something you do right away when you wake up? Right, Jeremy? Right, literally before I do, I don't, I don't grab my phone, I don't check my emails. Um, I'll say hi to my wife and then I go straight to, uh, my book is always next to me um, uh, at my nightstand and I'll read that or sometimes I'll throw on some um, uh, headphones and I'll listen to the book that I'm, I'm reading that, that week or that mm -hmm. month. But um, I try to read constantly and then for writing purposes, my desk is also in my bedroom. So one of my, my offices and so I'll sit down at my desk and I'll have my laptop there and I'll start writing um, and typing stuff out that are in, that's on my mind. It's also important that you keep a notebook by you at all times too. You don't know when a good idea is gonna come. Um, and I believe that that you know a lot of people kind of segregate their, their time. They think, okay, my eight to five is when I'm gonna build my wealth. Right. Um, that's just not reality. It's not, that's not actually what really happens. So I don't ever wanna miss that. I'm always trying to move the ball forward every single day. And so writing and reading are ways that I can measure that for myself. Awesome. Is there any other steps besides the reading, the, uh, the steps you just indicated that you do that are like paramount for your success for the day? Like sure. Yeah. There, um, well, what, what do I write about? It's probably like a, a good thing to talk about. So one of the things I like to write about is what are my goals? What are the things that I'm trying to achieve and accomplish? 
there's real power, as hokey as it may sound, there's actually real power in writing something down, mm -hmm. um, visualizing it and attacking it. And when you write something down, as you write it, you can start to understand, well, is that really what I want? And how am I supposed to get that? Right. So I'll set out my goals for the day, for the week, the month, or the year, and I'll go back and I'll reread those and see, am I on pace? Is that something I'm still passionate about doing? If you without that, you're going through life without a compass. You're right, going right. without no direction, no purpose. And how are you supposed to gain traction? Right. Um, I tell people this all the time, I tell my kids this, is most people in life want an escalator. They're trying to build an escalator. They go from A up to B. Unfortunately, what they actually end up with is a treadmill where they're just on it every single day and they're not getting anywhere. Mm -hmm. By writing down your goals, by, by uh, choosing, defining your goals and chasing after them, you can all of a sudden, you will start to put the right things in place mm -hmm. to turn your treadmill into an escalator and get where you want to go. That's awesome. What about, like I know you have a team, uh, yep. you work from an office, right? Yeah. Your, your team, yep. mostly remote, you have some remote uh, guys. Yeah, I've got right? um, a handful remote, but everyone else works out of our office. Every day. Any particular step, we talked about team a lot today in uh, the different interviews, any particular step for you, like when you systematically hire people? Yeah, um, my rule about hiring anybody is I'm about the person, not the position. Okay. So a lot of businesses I think get wrong where they're really obsessed with the position and right. what the position needs instead of what the person can do. People that can sounds do. like Jim Collins, the who, the what, and when. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. And so I follow a, a very specific process to try to find the characteristics. Um, there are two types of people in this world. They're the givers and they're the takers. What you don't want in your organization are takers. These are people that have high, high expectations of what the company is going to do for them, not what they can do for the company. Right. So if people focus on the position, most often they're going to miss uh, reading that person and figuring out if that person is a giver or a taker. That's a tough one. How do you gauge that? By asking them certain questions and trying to unfold them. One of my favorite questions to ask if you're a giver or a taker is, um, tell me about the latest success that you had and how did you get it? If the person is um, not involving a team or not involving something besides themselves and it's all about them and how they did it, right. um, most likely they're taking credit for something. Right. Um, a giver, so they're undertakers now. They're undertakers. Um, right. And so when I have somebody who will tell me about something that they did that contributed to something bigger than themselves, right. uh -huh. that means that they are looking for the big why. They're looking for the thing that they can contribute to. Right. And though, that's, that's what a giver wants to do. A right. giver lo is looking for the big idea right. that they can be a part of. The taker is like, well, I'm going to take whatever this business is doing and I try to get the most I can pull or take from that business, whether that's uh, money, or whether that's uh, uh, luxuries and, and, and expenses, and whatever they can get, right. they're gonna take it, and that's what I don't want. Interesting, that's a good nugget. Yeah. Uh, what about your wealth? I know you're an entrepreneur. Do yeah. you do anything specific, like when, with your cash flow that you get from your business? Is there a particular investment that you believe in, that you, like, not recommend, but you, you would, like, for someone who has 10 years, 20 years, what, what do you think people should do like if well, they have sort of some, some cash, cash flow? Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Um, uh, Bill Gates, right. use him. Uh, how, many, how many of his stocks made him a billionaire? A lot. One. Microsoft. Right. His own made him the actual yeah, yeah. billionaire. Well, most people it's forget. Stock options. It, uh, it's his own. I guess where I was going with that is that it's yourself. If there's one thing I invest in and try to go invest back into, that is myself, and that's a big miss of a lot of people. Um, I try to back, invest back into my business. I try to invest back into an, another idea that I have, another opportunity that I have. So from a cash flow perspective, I have um, a very defined budget. If you don't know, it's like mar I'm in marketing. If you don't know your numbers, you're dead. You're dead, you can't learn, you can't grow. Money is the same way. Unfortunately, so many people are afraid of numbers. They're afraid of their money. They don't want to look at their bank account. They don't want to look at their savings account. I call them, uh, 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 they take their statements and they stuff them in the drawer. They're drawer stuffers. Mm -hmm. And those drawer stuffer people, how are you spot? That's avoiding reality. It's yeah. avoiding reality because, it, because for some reason there is this um, anxiety and animosity against money and right. against numbers and against wealth. 
And so it's very important for me to make sure that every single week, I, and I do this myself, I've got an accountant, I've got a team of people, mm -hmm. um, I have a controller for my business, but every single week, both for my businesses and for my personal on Sundays, it's money, money Sunday mornings where I go through, I have a spreadsheet, and I will put in the expenses, I'll put in the revenues, so myself, so that I can see what is happening. Is that your church time? <laughs> yeah, right? It's, 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 um, oh, I, I believe in that too, but it, it's my way to, look, if it's in, you have to have a direction, it's a compass. It's right. the way that you're looking at your map and seeing, did I, am I down that road? Should I make a left or should I make a right? If you don't know where your money's at, right. how, are you, how is it possible for you yeah, to do that? Yeah. Um, other than that, um, the age I'm at in my life, I'm aggressive and I want big, I want, I want to go big. And so I can take risk and afford to take risk. Um, Tell, that's a good question that I asked today. Uh, yeah. I, I felt it was, it was interesting is, if there's someone watching us and they are making 40, $45,000 a year and they are like, I want the Grand Cardone or whatever, 10X my life. Yeah. How do you recommend people to approach that thing? They have the desire to 10X, sure. they don't have the path, they don't have the blueprint. How would you recommend, like you are a successful guy, I mean, what would you say to a guy like this? Let's say that person is your son or whatever, someone you care for. Yeah, um, that is a great question. And something actually I do get asked a lot from friends who are in that very, very same situation. I forget sometimes that you know not everybody's in our situation where they own their businesses, they're doing millions in revenue, no. and they have the lifestyle that we have. Mm -hmm. um, but we both started, not, I didn't come with a super spoon in my mouth. I had to make everything I had. So I took a plane from Paris. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right. You did. You're a bit I, be, I barely, I, I be, but I barely had anything left. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I tell them um, that every person has their gifts and their talents, um, and believe it or not, it's a myth that you are going to fall in love with something when you're not good at it. Right. So get good at something. Right. Get really good at something, right? And when you're really, really good at something, that breeds opportunity, and then when you take advantage of the opportunity. So you're saying, become good or an expert at something or passionate about something, and find a way to monetize that. That's right. Well, but when you become good at something, that's what you'll love. Right. If you look at your life, what you love the most is probably something that um, you are probably really, really good at, or want to be really, really good at. One right. of those two things. Right. Right. Then. You figure what will naturally happen when you become really good at something, you'll be able to monetize something. And here's what you're going to monetize is information. People want to know how you're so good at the thing that you do. Mm -hmm. That is so priceless. And this is the era that we're in. We're in right. the information education right. game that's right. in every area of your life. Well, that's an interesting thing because they say to be an expert at anything, you, didn't, you need 10,000 of hours that you, you invest and you dedicate 100% yourself into. Well, people don't put 10,000 hours. So if you have that knowledge, you become the shortcut. You you know? the, you, you're exactly right. And I actually, I hear that expression too, to be an expert at something. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's, that's a myth, and, and here's why I believe that's a myth. Because an expert is a relative statement. Right. An expert to what? The truth is, if you imagine that you're on a path, a line, okay? Yeah. And, and if you're just a little bit more advanced in the line, you're not at the end where this would be a quote unquote 10,000 expert. Right. Everybody that's behind you still wants to know what you know. Right. Does that make sense? So you always have information that you want to share, that people want to know about, that you can. And there is there are ways that you can monetize that. If anything, people also have to understand that wealth isn't about money. I haven't talked about money. There's things that I like to call media currency, right? relationship currency right. um, this is when you're building relationships with people you're building capital right. and you can exercise that capital for favors or for um, for them to do something so you have a lot more assets that, besides money and they're more powerful than money money is always the absolute byproduct of it it's the right. thing that happened it's, a, it's always it's the sawdust from cutting wood that's what money is mm -hmm. it's the sawdust and so many people they concentrate on on the sawdust. They're like, I want more, well, go cut some wood. And what is that wood that you're cutting? Maybe that's you um, starting a website about um, cooking, or maybe that's you starting a restaurant, or maybe that's- It's funny, a lot of people say that today, you know, monitors your passion. Yep. That's a, like a big one to go 10X, guys, that you have a, a, a side entrepreneurship 
adventure, anything, even if you have a job, like start something yeah. you know, that you are passionate about and see if it, it grows, you know? Yeah, that's it. well, because you'll be... Because um, you use that cash flow then to compound that into other things, like the other speaker said today, uh, real estate or whatever, you know, the, the market, compounding tax training or retirement, anything, yeah, right? Yeah, there's nothing worse than losing money, except for when you lose money and you don't know why. Right. And you, it's very hard for you to lose money in something that you're extremely passionate about. Right. You're, you're gonna, you're, you can't help yourself but right. be right. super involved. And when you start to get in th involved with things, at least me personally, anytime I've ever lost money on an investment deal, it was usually because it sounded okay, I had the money, so I did it, and I forgot about it. Or I, you know, I just didn't keep the tabs on it. Right. And, and that, those things always blew up. Nothing has blown up if I personally put 110% of my time and energy behind, right. you know? So if you want to 10X your money, if you want to grow your wealth, if you want to go to the next level, mm -hmm. take the things that you're the most passionate about. If you don't have something that you're most passionate about, so right. try something right. and stick with it. Well, I think also a big one is, is be the best you can be. Yeah. Have no regrets, guys. You try, it doesn't work, it doesn't work. You go back to your job or you have your job if you're smart. You do it at the same time, you know? Well, that goes back to what you do every morning. Right. Reminding yourself that you're ridiculously in control of your life. Right. Your boss is in control of you. Your spouse is in control of you. Your mom's not in control <laughs> of you. Right. No one's in control of you. This is right. your life. At the, you come into this world by yourself. You're gonna you're gonna leave by yourself. Right. That's just the reality of it. Uh, so, what about your relationships, uh, Jeremy? I talked. To, I just talked to Michael at one point, and he said, oh, "I'm not hanging with these people." What about your relationship? How do you approach relationship? Your friends, your stuff. Like, do you have a certain way of looking at relationship with people? Um. I, I love, I just love, I, 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 I surround myself with people who are positive and right. passionate and exciting and right. they care about something. Right, Michael said something yeah, earlier, I'm not, I don't hang with those people that don't think it's possible or don't believe or whatever. So again, the, the idea of surrounding yourself, like they say, you are the average of the five people that yeah. you hang out with. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't, I don't say that there's people I won't hang Some out people, with. you, we don't have the choice, like family people sometimes. Well, it is what it is. <laughs> I, I will say, I'll say this is that, um, like, I think it's better to keep yourself open to all types of relationships, right. but where you push and lean into relationship, um, set time aside for the relationships. Those types of relationships should be something that sharpens you, something that right. betters you, something that, um, is rewarding. Um, and be careful, be very, very careful. These are, the, these are the relationships you can't quite put your finger on. Those are the ones that you need to take a second look at because usually in those types of relationships, it's, it's not an equally yoked. They're taking more than they're giving. Mm -hmm. So I just like to surround myself by people who give more, who love, who are passionate about something. I don't care if they're super right. successful. I don't right. care if they right. have a drive. So you want that plus, that plus energy coming. You, you, you want to feel like I'm elevating, not I want, yeah, exactly. I want somebody who, um, look, I don't need to, you don't need to be a millionaire to be my friend. Right. But if you're living, if you're loving life, right. then you're, then you're winning. Right. And that's yeah. the type of people I want. It's somebody yeah. who loves life and who's excited about what they're doing in their life. That's awesome. Last question, Jeremy. Jeremy Blossom, 20 years ago, or maybe not 20 years, because you're fairly young. <laughs> it's like I keep on thinking about my age. And we did your birthday yes. uh, last night, so happy yes. birthday again. Thank you. So Jeremy, Jeremy, let's say 15 years ago, and Jeremy now, w what's the big difference in your mind? Um, I had doubt 15 years ago. I um, doubted myself. I doubted the possibilities. I doubted the potential I had. I doubted. Um, um, how actual far I, if someone if you told me 15 years ago I'd be here owning a you know multi-million dollar right. business right. Uh, speaking at conferences right. traveling around the right. world right. Uh, I, I'm, I'm a super super poor kid from Cleveland Ohio um, who grew up in government housing until right. I was 17 years old I moved out wow. when I was a senior in high school right so to say I got here um, I would have told that person I'll tell anybody else out right. there is that that's a lie doubt is the is the is the most insidious nasty thing that could ever happen to you because you can do it you you absolutely can overcome that you are capable of it and we're way more powerful all of us than we ever imagined that we could be how did you overcome that limiting belief because when you you, you grow in a tough environment and stuff how do you 
get over that limiting belief? How did you get like like concretely helping helping others there? It's not going to happen overnight. That's a myth too. I don't like people telling you, oh, just just you know, take this one month course or read this yeah. book and you're gonna overcome Turn it. Turn a thousand into a quarter million dollars. Yeah. We know it in the financial <laughs> industry. Um, winning, success, wealth, um, this like the one percent lifestyle is a daily choice right. it's a daily choice and and you have to focus on the micro wins have to i have a philosophy so that's a, is that what you're saying that those micro wins built your confidence your, your belief in yourself that i can well i'm, I'm here why wow, i can do this so maybe i can go here oh no. wow i can do this and is that was that it was, the thought process it was, i think it was yeah it was the fact that I started to um, take inventory. This is me doing my finances on Sunday. It's taking inventory of your wins and your losses. Um, I don't lose. I know that sounds crazy. I don't lose. I don't believe in losing. You have to. You have to give me your recipe because me, I always lose forward, like or failing forward. No, like right. I've lost. I've I've learned a lot to grow in my life well, the, by by moving forward, losing forward. You said the opportunity word right now. I learn. Right. I either win or I learn. If right. something doesn't go the way I thought it would go, if something doesn't happen the way I want it to happen, right. I will learn, not lose. Right. And that's the big difference. And the only way that you learn is that you accept what happened. So many people, if it was a failure or something didn't happen, they don't accept it. They just forget it. Don't right. forget it. Learn from it. Take it. Build off of that. And that is what also segregates so many people. You don't live this fairy tale that I just win all the time and focus only on the positive. No. Actually, the, 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 the losses, the negatives, the setbacks, that's where you get all the energy. That's where you get the drive. That's where you get the ideas. That's what you know. And the truth is, is that I think both of us, we failed more times than other people even tried. Yeah. We failed more times than that's you true. probably tried, if you're watching this. Right. And that power of me trying more than you. By I the way, guys, this is very profound. Even if you fail 90% of the time forward, and you win 10% of the time in your entire life, you can be massively successful. That's the bottom line, That's guys. That's right. That's you, a you, bottom you line know. for everything in life. If you, know. you choose to learn and grow right. from those mistakes. And you never gave up. That's the Ever. thing for me. I've never, never, ever gave up. Like, that's right. I don't care how, well, what. that's when you actually... Like do. Elon Musk, I have to be seriously <laughs> incapacitated or dead to give up. That's right. And you see that? You see the thought process there? Your mentality of saying, I, I don't give up. I'll have to, you have to kill me or I yeah. have to be like on a, you know, on life support to, right. to, to not give up. That's right. Um, that's called grit. Yeah. It's lost. Somehow that got lost somewhere. Some people have not found that grit that I right. will do whatever it is. But you know what? I think there's a lot of people, they want to, they have the desire to, they just don't know how to start. I mean, I came in the US, guys, and even though I was educated from Paris, I had to street smart myself on everything that I did. And a lot of it is blood, tears, you know, and successes that you look forward by experiences. But like you said, you've got to have this desire. That we cannot infuse in you. If you have the desire and you are not giving up, we can, people, successful people can help you, mentor you. Otherwise, eh, if you don't have a strong desire, it's rough, man. Yeah, you gotta find it. Look, look at this guy. From rough places to high places. Hey, Jeremy. Thank you for your time, man. Always good to see you, my man.